great. Welcome to the June Education Standards Committee meeting. We are uh, gonna start today with um, an overview of the agenda, which uh, Caitlin just put in the chat. And, um, Uh, sorry, Caitlin. Yeah, the formatting is a bit weird. There we go. Thank you. So uh, priority committee project updates. Um, since we've got Alex and Jessica, uh, excuse me, President Sutter on, could we start with a quick update on uh, social study standards? Sure. I am happy to do that. Hi, all. Um, I also need to head out in a moment to head to the Eastern High School graduation soon enough. Um, I'm going to try to stick around as long as I can, though. Um, so social study standards, last time uh, Vice President Thompson and I spoke with Superintendent Grant, she said that she had spoken with the writers, that was a meeting that she had on June 8th, so she spoke with the writing committee, they talked about re-engaging the writing committee and expanding the number of people working on the writing, so specifically there was concern that there had not been enough elementary school teachers who'd been able to stay as part of the writing committee, and that that may have had some impact on uh, the concerns Aussie raised internally about the elementary school standards. Um, she also mentioned that as part of that process of re-engaging writers and expanding the number uh, of folks working on the writing of the standards, that they would also be uh, reissuing stipends. So this would be also compensated work by educators and other academics who came to be part of the process. If they uh, continue on the approach that they and their consultants have designed, they hope to be back to us at some point in the fall. Uh, she didn't want to give more details on time than that, but said that she would happily do that once we got through the July uh, agenda items that Aussie's already working on. The other thing she shared, which I think is going to please Representative Wattenberg especially, is that there's a creation by Aussie of an advisory committee of academics and other experts across the ideological spectrum who Aussie is going to engage to review the standards prior to the public review. So as we, they talk more about that, I would like to ask the superintendent um, whether there are opportunities for the board to also engage with that set of advisors or uh, at least to get their comments prior to the public review so that we have that process. I, I said directly to Dr. Grant, I said, oh, Representative Wattenberg is gonna love that because it's something she's been pushing on um, as something that she thought would be valuable for the quality of the standards. So as I learn more about that, um, we'll share that, but I expect that Aussie will be sharing that, uh, more information on that with us too soon. So, so one question on that. I mean, I, you're right. I, I'm very happy to hear that. Do I understand that to mean that it could be, as it stands, it's not a public meeting per se, like maybe we could engage in it, but it's not a public meeting of this group. Um, I don't think that group has been assembled yet, so I would say that I'm not sure what the right answer to that is and whether they've even decided that. What I do know is that she felt very strongly, as I know you do, that it's important that we, and I'll use the royal we, but meaning like the government side of things, needs to have insights from experts who have reviewed the standards written by our educators before we put it out to the public, um, that that would be a really valuable component of this standards work. Great, great. Thanks. Yeah. President Sutter, what 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 next steps do you think that this committee needs to take on, if any? I think the most important thing is that we push for, um, and I'm happy to, to 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 be part of this, that we push for it to be on the agenda for the August working session as a requested update from OSI. Um, we don't have an August public meeting, so it's not something that the superintendent would mention in her public remarks, but we do have an August working session. So I'd like to ask for an update then so that we can know more about the timeline. Yeah, leave. that's what I understand, um, Representative Bernstad, that, that we're not going to get to see the standards until fall um, because they're not going to be revised uh, until fall uh, because they're using the summer to work with these writers to make the changes to the elementary school standards. And I'll love that, but I think that that, is, um, that has been a pretty clear and consistent message now from the superintendent. So I think if we, ask, uh, if we ask for them to tell us the latest and greatest at the August working session, that information will also be shared with the public. Okay. Um, 
Well, then I will pass to, to leave and to Giselle to talk about the next point, reflecting on uh, the student panel that we got to, to have and um, uh, thinking about next steps for, for us to think, uh, think through how we revise standards more broadly and incorporate student voices in that process. Representative Brinstadt, would you would you get started, or is this something that uh, Giselle was thinking about more this last last chunk of time? Yeah, this is probably more for Giselle. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah. linked in the agenda, there should be, and I'm going to go ahead and link it in our Zoom chat too. Um, it's just a memo um, entitled "Student Focused Panel Recommendations." So just. I'm going to link that first before I go on so you can open that up if you're interested. Um, so I think a few of the main takeaways just from one, the panel I think went really awesome. We got some great insights from our different student representatives that joined um, and Ms. German Smith, who also joined from Connecticut. And so I think a big takeaway um, would maybe potentially, and this is under recommendation number one, is codifying an official academic standards review and revision process that has interagency approval. So meaning collaboration between Aussie and the state board and just have something written so that things, you know, for future standards revisions, things just flow a little bit more seamlessly. Um, and, you know, it clearly lists who's responsible for what step in the process. Um, I think this could make things really transparent for the public, which is something when I was researching different review and revision standards for different states, um, I really appreciated that Colorado in particular and Tennessee, they both had pretty transparent processes that the public could easily access from their publicly facing websites. And so I think that would be something to consider moving forward. Um, and within those, that actual uh, codified process, I think including student voice and engagement, and particularly in this piece, just clearly outlining how students will be engaged and how the student advisory committee could be engaged in this process too. I think just having that clearly written out um, would be incredibly helpful, especially as we're thinking about ways to further engage students. Um, I think this could be a big step in that process. And then recommendations three and four, here are just some more specifics of what um, the codified review and revision process can contain. So potentially having committees similar to Tennessee that convene, um, potentially that could be something that's helpful. Um, it sounds like Aussie from Dr. Sutter, your update, it sounds like Aussie's trying to implement something similar to that by having um, a team of experts that are looking at the social studies standards. So maybe it's something that could be codified, you know, written down somewhere. And then recommendation number four being review and revise academic standards, just at a minimum of blank amount of years. I put six years, just basing that off of what Tennessee does, but um, I also don't want to limit us in any way. And there is language in some of these states as well that states that a revision may happen, but, or excuse me, a, a review may happen, but that doesn't necessarily mean that revisions need to occur. Um, they should only occur, if, you know, they really need to be updated. But those are a few of the recommendations just from the panel. And yeah, I can answer any questions, but I'll go ahead and pass it back to you, Alistair. Great, thank you so much. This is a question for, for uh, Mr. Zhu, President Sutter. I, I like these recommendations. I mean, do we need to, it would be nice to be able to share this memo more broadly. Um, do we need to sign off on or edit and sign off on anything before we, we can do that? Just to start the conversation. Um, I'll just, I'll weigh in with a sort of general procedure. I think if the committee okay. says, we think these recommend it, that we think that this is worth sharing with the board. That's the next step. Got and it. we can share that with the board. We could do it via email. We could discuss it at the July working session. There's a lot of ways we could do that. Um, but I think the key is for the committee to be comfortable with it. Then it's shared with the board. Then it could go to something more public. Super. Thank you. Representative Weinberg. 
Yeah, so um, I have some comments um, and I don't have any concern with it being made public to the board for discussion, but I think, well, let me ask some, some questions. First of all, the, the part about the sort of number two, right? on the student engagement, I think that's very good. And it really starts to sort of put down on paper how we would do that. Yes, good. Um, this number three, um, that we're gonna select and convene a standing risk revision committee, et cetera, et cetera. That to me, it's, I don't understand exactly what's in there. So I just wanna be clear that I don't understand what that is. And among the things that I wanna raise, and maybe we wanna do another panel similar to the student one on some of these other issues. But my question is, as we've just discussed, where's the input from the experts? That's some, if we're gonna do a codification, that's something that should be in there. Where's the, um, and another thing that I felt was missing here, and I, I don't know that everybody agrees with it, is more board discussion. You know, where where is the board discussion? And so I think that's also something that should be part of the, what we're looking at. So you got the, and then you may want the public, we certainly want the public in at the end. We also want the public in somewhere earlier. I think that's a question. And those might be questions for an, a panel on that, on sort of what's that part of the process look like. Um, so that's, so I just wanna say, I like what we got on the student stuff. I think the rest we need to sort of bake, need to think about bake, I guess not bake, think about before we bake. Um, <laughs> Um, I I'm never that. good on the metaphors. I'm sorry. Oh, I always Von Berg. And I guess that's a question. So, so uh, Mr. Zhu, Caitlin, um, um, if we were to look into convening some of these folks from these other states, maybe an academic who is an expert at just standards broadly, if we can find someone who, who really knows and studies this, could we have one more panel? Um, does this committee, do the members of this committee think that would be, agree that that would be worthwhile? Okay. Uh, President Sutter, what's your take? So I, I guess I just wanna understand what the panel, what, what do you hope the panel would provide to us, Representative Wattenberg? So I would like to understand how other states engage expertise. Um, where, at what point in the process do they do it? How do they engage with the writers, with the teachers, with the public, et cetera, et cetera? And let me say, I don't, um, it doesn't have to be at a public meeting. It could be at a committee meeting. I just think we need to understand it better so that we can understand what some of the options are and sort of think about what would make sense for us. Yeah, one thing I wonder about is whether it might make sense to reach out to the folks in the state departments of education that we uh, identified as model. So Colorado, Tennessee, places where we liked the cycle and the approach. Um, if we reach out to the State Department of Ed and the State Board of Ed to understand how they manage this, what I want to be cognizant of is I think having panels and having opportunities to discuss is always good, but there may also be like that feels like something we might also be able to ask at the staff level uh, to just have staff reach out to State Boards of Ed and State Departments in these places and then see if there's more that we want to engage in discussion on. I think, I think asking the question makes really good sense, but I think maybe starting with, could we solicit information and then see if we need to invite folks for further discussion. That's fine with me. The one, I don't know what, else, what other states are on the list. I'd definitely put Massachusetts also, but. Okay. And I, so think, then... I think this Aussie would agree with that as well. Great. So, so then my, my thought there is, if we can get Caitlin and Alex your help, um, why don't we have this committee send to you two a list of the questions we would like to ask to the states that Giselle identified and any more any others we wanna add and get your help to first ask those questions to staff at the other states that we're looking, looking at as, as either peers and, and models. Absolutely, sounds good. Okay. And, and to go, so I would just say to get some of their documents, I mean, maybe they, do they have an advisory, like if it's socially an advisory committee of historians or a, is it their local state university or is it their, you know, do the teachers meet with the scientists? What, you know, that kind of stuff would be good. 
I have one other thing on this and, and I don't want to monopolize and this may not be the right place to raise it, but I want to keep it in front of us, which is one thing I think would be a huge innovation and great for us to do. And I don't know that anybody else does it um, explicitly is to really think about this idea of background knowledge and how you build background knowledge and how you systematically build on it over time and to somehow build into the process I would love to build into the process of that kind of review, that kind of thinking. And so somewhere between now and then, we may wanna also talk to some people who are kind of experts about that or think about that or done that. I don't have anything specific to offer on it, but I just wanted us to think about it and think about when the right time might be to engage that idea. I mean, what's beautiful, I think about what, what you just said is that it's it, it really is not knowledge then is the thing that kind of weaves all of the different standards together, right? I mean, we need, when we're thinking about, and especially maybe this is the transition to literacy as the next topic, we know that decoding times knowledge is reading comprehension, right? So if you don't have that knowledge base, um, you don't really understand what you're reading, if you've, even if you can sound it out, right? So I, I think uh, for, for me, that's a really interesting way to, 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 to weave it all together. It's, it's also, um, I'd be curious to then add that as a macro question to to the other states, like how how are you connecting the dots between the various standards right now? Because it does feel like they're they're updated and revised in quite quite siloed ways. Um, and for that, maybe they you guys should also talk to Natalie Wexler, who as much as anybody I know of sort of thinks about this. I don't know that she's had the conversation or knows anything, but if she doesn't know anything, that tells us something too. One of your constituents, I think. Uh, he is, yes. President Sutter, you have your hand up. Yeah, I would add two things on that. And I think Natalie's great to be a person we talk to. I would also encourage us. I know we've reached out to folks at Johns Hopkins before about this, and they've, they're have they working with uh, DCPS on curriculum, so didn't feel like they could engage as experts on the standards. But I think this is uh, outside that bound enough that we should ask Ashley Berner and um, Steiner. David Steiner about this question of background knowledge, because I think I would put them in that same camp with Natalie, like people deep thinking deeply about this. The other thing I would note is I wonder if there's a way we can also make that question and think about that topic in a nuanced way, knowing what we know about discrepancies in background knowledge that students bring to school, that some students uh, bring more background knowledge by virtue of experiences outside of classrooms. Um, and others need to be provided that background knowledge as part of the curricular experience. How do we ask them about the differentiated approach to try to make equitable access to background knowledge um, for students who may not come with it uh, into the building? Because I think that that's a huge equity issue for students in DC. And I'm curious like whether states have thought at all about field experiences or experiential learning and opportunities to build that into standards aligned documents um, as one path towards that. Great. Um, okay, so we've got our homework for this piece. I like this next step. Um, Giselle, uh, leave. Do you, does that make sense to you as the right next step? Great. Okay. So um, deadline is before the next meeting uh, to send over to Alex and, and Caitlin then. Um, and I think this is a good transition to um, uh, our guests, uh, if I may uh, pass to, is it Sharon or Sh President Sutter, I'll uh, ask you to introduce our guests. Yeah, sure, I'm happy to. So I'm delighted that we have two uh, master's students from American University uh, joining us. Um, and I will actually let the, the uh, students introduce themselves. They're fabulous. Great. All right, I'm sorry, it cut out for a second when I like clicked over, but um, my name is Sharon Honor. I'm in my last semester at American University. I'm really excited. And it's just so much I've learned so far from being on the call. So this is very interesting. Um, and I am joined by Miss Kamal Janejo. Um, Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Kamal Janejo and I'm also so glad to be joining you tonight. Um, we have a lot of um, interesting work that we've been doing that we would love to share with you. 
Um, so I can go ahead and start. Would it be possible to share our screen? Yes, I will give you that privilege shortly. Thank you. Okay, try. Okay, so um, right now me and Sharon are currently working on developing a literacy crosswalk as well as a teacher survey to disseminate to teachers in um, public schools within DC, um, just to see what best strategies are being used with, within professional development. So we've so far come up with a few preliminary survey questions, which we feel um, will change as our research increases. Um, some of these may be adjusted to a Likert scale instead of being short answer, um, just encourage more teacher engagement. Um, we also plan to ask about teacher experience and uh, years teaching, as well as a multiple uh, select question about particular professional development that they've um, experienced. But um, I'll just go ahead and read a few of the questions we have so far. So we're going to ask about um, name and demographic identifiers, as well as how many professional developments they were required to take. Of those professional developments, how many were based in literacy? In what ways would um, having professional developments on literacy and reading benefit you? Um, in what what are some classroom str struggles they are seeing when it comes to teaching literacy and reading comprehension? Uh, do any students receive support outside of school like tutoring or uh, mentoring? What do literacy reading professional developments look like? How supported do they feel by um, the school district when it comes to literacy um, based professional developments? And if there's any information they, they want to add to shed light on early literacy needs in the public schools of DC. So those are what we have, but again, we predict that it will change. Um, I'll go ahead and pass it on to Sharon so she can talk about some of the uh, research that we've done so far. All right, yes, yeah, so for the second part, we're trying to create a crosswalk and we've narrowed it down to about 10 states so far that we're looking at. And this is where, again, we're kind of looking for you guys' feedback. Um, for this crosswalk, we're looking at um, PG County Schools um, in Maryland. And some of the PDs we already know, professional developments that PG County Schools offers. I'm, when we were doing our research, we saw that they have professional development schools, which are innovative, innovative institutions formed through partnerships between colleges of schools and education and K through 12 schools to help improve practice of teaching and enhance student learning. Um, we're looking at Alexandria City Public Schools, we're looking at Guilford County Schools where I'm currently employed um, in North Carolina. And I, I know a little bit more about their PDs as well. They offer professional developments around literacy all year long. They have a focus on ESL, um, early literacy vocabulary and instructional strategies. Some courses are self-paced, others are via Zoom and some you can also take in person. We're focusing on Pennsylvania's School District of Philadelphia, um, this district has nine PD days built into their, into the school year, um, and we're still researching to find out some of the specifics of the PDs, and then some of the other places we're researching are Newark Public School District, um, Austin IS, ISD and Houston ISD, Hillsborough County, Hillsborough County School District, and Miami-Dade School District, Los Angeles Unified School District, San Francisco Unified School District, St. Charles Parish Public Schools, and then Jackson Public School District. And pretty much our end goal is to have a tangible resource that compares and contrasts the different PD offerings in these school districts and showcase PDs around literacy reading that have proven to be effective. So we would love, again, your valuable insight to help guide our research to, and we're welcome to any suggestions that will help tailor our research as well. And then when picking these states and school districts, we were looking at some variety for some variety as far as like urban school districts and mm -hmm. things like that, rural areas. So that's pretty much it as far as where we're at with our research. Um, great, thank you. Thank you so, so much. This is this is amazing. Uh, sorry, are there are there more slides or uh, I was I was just gonna oh, no. go into the weeds here, but um, I'll zoom out. Okay, great. So uh, this is super. Would you mind going back to the slide before then so we can see those questions one more time? And I want, um, I'm ask, I want to ask the other committee members just to kind of 
take a look and and provide any feedback. But sorry, I'm I'm, I'm missing the hands here. Uh, so first is uh, Representative Wattenberg. So, so hi. So on the um, on the second one, can we go back to that one? I want. So, how are these being picked? These oh, districts. Um, um, honestly, it's really just been looking at similar states. We looked at the demographics of some different states, and then when we looked at the demographics of the school districts. So looking at demographics, looking at poverty rates, looking at all of those things. And then, I mean, it is some kind of like random assignment or selection, but using that to go into further detail to see what PD offerings there were. So we try to find some states that were similar to DC and that some that were a little different, but pretty much all of them have in common or we're trying to see if all of them have in common um, effective PDs that are offered around literacy. So it might be some trial and error where we might have to look at some other districts or some other states as well. So I'm not completely sure where we're going here. So I wanna just acknowledge that and I can be sort of better brought up to date. But what I'm concerned about is sort of two things here, or raised two things. One is, you know, there are places that are known to do a very good job and in general, I mean, part of why we're so focused on literacy is a lot of places don't do a great job. So to do to sort of catalog and research and find out what a bunch of places are doing and not have a sense of whether they're places we want to learn from, I'm not sure that we're going to get what we want from that. So I just want to put that out there. I mean, I might rather, I mean, maybe it would be more useful to us to sort of identify a few places that are regarded as really doing a good job in this and look at them. Um, so that's a question. And then my related one is, to what end are we gonna use this? I mean, is this something that's gonna help us make the case to Asi on behalf of something or not? If it's not, I wonder, is it the right place to be putting our energy? And again, I, I'm raising this completely without any um, knowledge of that. And then, okay, I'm, and then later I'll go back to the first slide, but. Okay, so let me take a stab and then President okay. Senator, I'd love your take. So, so first, um, uh, because we've got this task force that Aussie is leading around literacy, we get this chance, I think, to really shape where our literacy related investments go in the next budget cycle. And I would be excited about being equipped with as much information as, as possible to make the right um, to make the right investments there. And so I would be excited about lots of the answers to the questions in the previous slide. Um, the, the piece around, I mean, I will also say so far, most of my time when I look at other uh, jurisdictions has been focused on who is growing faster in terms of outcomes than we are. But as you're presenting this and looking at more similar demographics, I find it actually quite interesting because one of the, one of the areas that we've gotten pushed back, Representative Wattenberg, is Mississippi isn't DC. And so, you know, we can't do what Mississippi did because they're so different demographically, right? Even though they are leapfrogging us in reading outcomes. And so I, I think I don't quite, um, it, this is an inchoate thought, right? But it's, there, there's something interesting about this kind of looking at a, a variety of variables uh, for me in, in this analysis. At the same time, you know, I had that tendency uh, and thought it in mind to Representative Wattenberg in my first, my first comment when, uh, when I had raised my hand and, uh, from this slides list was let's add Tennessee because they're one of the ones that are that are growing fastest, right? But um, it's uh, I, I'd love your take on this, President Sutter. Yeah, I mean, so I think everyone on this call knows that Sharon and Kamal are my students, uh, and so they're in my summer um, pro seminar course. And so one of the things that I work on with all the student groups is what is the client asking of them the state board in this case is their client. Um, and 
what are we, how are they approaching responding to the question? So when they were talking about this crosswalk of literacy PD, this is something that we all talked about. Kamal and Sharon and I talked about like, well, how would they pick the places to look at? What is of interest to the committee? What is of interest to the board in learning about this? And I was not present for the initial conversations that led the students to begin this research. So I think for me, the questions that would help clarify whether this is the right set of districts, not the right set of districts is, what are the things you want to learn in this crosswalk? If there are sort of three dimensions along which the crosswalk is being developed, what do you wanna learn? Is it what professional developments are offered? Is it what professional developments are mandated? Is it what policy underlies the sort of framework of professional developments that cascade from it? I think getting to that route would be helpful because you know, we all know how Mississippi has made huge gains. Um, Alexandria City Public Schools and Prince George's County, I think, are fascinating because they are nearby and very different governance contexts than we have. But uh, we have students that move back and forth between these places, right? Prince George's County, especially DC students are commonly mobile between these. Um, Guilford County Schools has been lauded for a long time for strong leadership and professional development they've done within a state that necessarily has not taken that same state level uh, policy reins. So I think there's a, there's a couple of different ways to justify these districts, but to me, the key question that I hope we as members can get clear on is like, what do we wanna learn in this crosswalk? And then how do we refine the list of places to best help us get answers to those questions? Let me pass to Representative Bernstadt. That's a it's a big one, uh, President Sutter. So so let's all think on it. But but uh, let me pass to to Representative Bernstadt first. Thank you. Um, can we go back to the slide before this? Uh, I had some questions about the questions, uh, and I'm not sure if or not questions, just thoughts. And I'm not sure if this is without of the uh, if this is beyond the scope of the project. I'm sorry, it's late. Um, I'm not sure if this is beyond the scope of the project, but would it be possible to include uh, questions about out of school uh, supports for teachers, either like pre-professional supports. So like when you were at university, did you have any classes that were required for literacy or did you take any literacy related classes? Um, or, you know, now that you, or like in your, um, my mind is blanked on the word in your teacher preparatory program. If you took one, did it have, you know, literacy uh, specific courses, or are you offered courses outside of, you know, the confines of like professional developments in your school? I don't know if any of that was worded correctly, but would it be possible, or would it be even within like the scope of the project to include questions about things outside of just the school? Because I think that might help that might be helpful in, in, in identifying like where we can kind of isolate some major issues. So at the risk of, um, uh, Representative Wattenberg, is your hand a new hand or is that an old no, hand? No, it's an, it's an old hand. Okay. <laughs> um, at the risk of derailing, um, I want to add, this is not a replace, but more like an addition, actually. I'll put it in the chat because these are these are two questions that I've been looking at trying to answer and I, I, I'd love your take on whether or not they fit in. Um, but when we, you know, I, I'd be curious, all, all of these states have taken a different approach also to how that, you know, we're, 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 there's a massive wave across the country to do more training. Which one do you pick? Do you pick letters? Do you pick TNTP? Do you make your own? Um, or is it, do you, do you use uh, OG, right? I mean, there's, there's so many out there and I, I'm, I'm curious what, not, not which one was picked, but what process was taken to pick the one that was selected. Um, and then looking at uh, one thing that, that I'm very aware of and that, I, I, that, that scares me if we simplify this too much is, if we invest in training, but don't change some other things around it, like several of our teachers have told us, they've gone through the training, 
their principals or heads of school have not changed the curriculum or allowed them or authorized them, let's say, to actually use any of their training, it hasn't led to outcomes, right, that we want to see. And if we see develop, professional development in and of itself as a silver bullet, um, I, I, I fear that we will be disappointed, right? So uh, there's, there's that extra, extra layer. But I think I might be thinking about your question, President Sutter, not macro level enough, right? So uh, could, you, could you help us just reframe that question and, and bring us to the right level of analysis here? Yeah. Well, so one thing that occurs to me is like, I think I like these questions that you've put in the chat around like looking at what other states have done and understanding about the levers that need to go. But one thing I wonder about is what's, who are the best people to help us learn this? So there are a lot of professional learning organizations that work with states and districts to help them design and implement training, including working with existing kinds of training, right? So like TNTP, you use that as an example, but I'm super curious, like there's an effort underway right now, and I don't know where they are in the effort, um, to create a research practice partnership for professional learning at the Annenberg Institute at Brown. And it involves instruction partners and TNTP and school leader lab and someone else. Um, but then they also have this affiliate network of folks who do professional learning. So they're like one way to approach it is call all these school districts and see what they're doing. Another way to do it is like, could we, could we start up higher and like call the person at the Annenberg Institute who's working on this research practice partnership and say, can you help us start to shape the right question and give us some leads on places you've seen do this well? and ask them to help narrow down sources of information that might do this well. So I don't think the questions are necessarily wrong. I think we're still trying to figure out what is the right question, but I do wonder if we're going about identifying who to talk to in the right way. And maybe we sort of phone a friend in the form of an expert um, to, to get some direction. Because I'm certainly not an expert on this. Thank you, President Sutter. Uh, Representative Lundberg, you're on mute. Yeah, I mean, I also don't know what the right questions are because I'm not completely sure what we're trying to get out of it. I mean, one thing I would really like to know is, and some of these questions get at it, kind of what is the state of play? As somebody said and is here, literally, if you're a teacher in DC, what literacy training have you had? What did you have at the university before you came? What did you, what have you had in your school? And just under, you know, what did you learn? Um, how long was it? Um, was it any good? You know, that would be useful to know. Um, so I, that would be, I think, worth getting. And that is, um, that is something, I, I appreciate that. And that is something that I think requires I don't know if it's robust enough to just do like a statistically significant and over 30 for that. I, th I think it's got to be a pretty large sample size for that to be. Um, well, what is this meant? I guess, I, so what I is this meant right? to be? Um, so, so, so I think just, just zooming out for me, right? I find this really helpful because we are in many ways trying to prove our value as a partner to Aussie who is now owning this work, right? And it is my hope, and I will keep advocating for Aussie to do that research to say, because if, if it comes from Aussie, I find it will reach, you know, every teacher, let's hope, right, to say how, how, many, how many of uh, our teachers have actually gotten structured literacy training or uh, what training did, did our teachers get right before um, before they, before they joined us and as, as professional development within our system. So for, for me, the, the, many of these questions you've already listed on this slide are gonna be helpful for the board to partner with Aussie in this work. Um, and so even if we just answer these, right, I, I would find that really helpful. One, 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 one point for me, as I look through these question, those, questions though, is you've got a few different audiences here, uh, right? You're, you're, you're thinking about surveying some teachers, you're thinking about surveying some states, you're thinking about surveying some schools. Um, and 
for the for the for for just to help us kind of zoom in on what direction we think is the priority to start with, right? What I'm hearing Representative Wattenberg say is, you know, st could start with start with start with talking with some of our teachers uh, could be a, a place to go that could be really helpful. Um, uh, and and I I'm 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 a little bit I, I think that's really helpful. Uh, I also hope that Aussie will do it so that it's a wider sample size and more legitimate, right? Um, as a formal study, right? So uh, because it's a larger sample size, and so I'm I'm, I'm a little torn about that one uh, because I also find it useful to do this more kind of standard right, where the primary source is not individual people you talk to, but rather, or survey, but rather looking at the plans or resources or things that are already posted on, on, on other states' websites, right, or, or, or writing their staff, uh, their state board staff. So, um, President Sutter, how would you untangle this? Because I, I can see your mind, your mind moving fast. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I mean, one thing is like, um, it feels like there's a few stages of work we're trying to prepare for. And one stage of the work is what is a, like a set of questions we would want to ask in a survey that would be a draft that you could provide to folks at Aussie as this gets underway to say like the board cares about these things. This is the draft. We had our graduate students work on this and that provides like a, a, a clear document that can be shared as a, an entree to that task force. I think the other thing is the, there's research that is supposed to help the board get more understanding, more clarity on issues around professional learning uh, and best practices, but also professional learning and the context in which it operates. So for instance, if I think about Jackson, Mississippi, there's the question of what's going on in Jackson and how is that working at the district? What is the district doing? How is it being offered? How many teachers are we talking about? How many have been trained? How many are getting trained? Like those are district level questions, but there's a level up from that, which is what is the state context in which that operates? Mississippi passed a law mandating, you know, uh, the science of reading training for all teachers. So some of it is that we're trying to get understanding of like how a state policy works together with district implementation. And again, I wonder if there are ways we can phone a friend first to get clearer on who we should dive deep on with a state and district context, but maybe someone who can sit a level up and talk about this. And so you know, like if we already know that the Colorado Department of Education did this, great, we've got Colorado, we know from every media outlet writing about this that Mississippi is another one, but maybe a call to someone else who's an expert in this work on literacy uh, might be a good way to go about that. You know, and, and I offered up this university idea or some of these um, professional learning partners. But I think another thing is, you know, there's a bunch of journalists who've been covering this, right? I, American public media is a whole thing going on right now. But um, what's her name? Hard words, what the words say. Uh, who's the journalist? The um, Emily Hanford. Thank you. Like, I wonder if there are folks. Thank you very much, Representative Wattenberg. I know we had this whole conversation when Natalie Wexler wrote her book, um, but I wonder if there are folks like that who might also just help help us get smarter. And are, you know, we you've got two talented graduate students who are really good at qualitative research. Uh, so de de deploying them to make some of these calls and help build a not just a base of knowledge, but also a list of like, who would you talk to next and who we might ask the task force to, to speak with and learn from and do more research on. So this feels like we're staging work to come. Ms. Honor. Oh no, I was just trying to um, just make sense of everything. So as far as the direction that we're going in, I guess the two questions that stuck out, stood out were which professional developments are mandated and then how have they proven to be effective? but then going from the top level on down to try to, I guess, network and talk to those people um, instead of going like, okay, district on up and seeing how it's been affected, but basically answering those two. Because I know we have obviously, you know, the project guidelines, uh, which are of course, looking at literacy, creating a survey, creating a crosswalk, but just trying to get to the best or easiest way 
not the easiest, but the way that makes most the most sense to get the information that we need. So I think that one is that one is very specific, right? Um, and I, I find it really helpful as a as a way to narrow this. And it is one of the questions that Aussie has asked, has said that they're looking for help to answer. So it's it would immediately add value, but it would also I'm feeling the loss then of not knowing the rest of the answers to the rest of the questions. <laughs> but 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 I I say that all you know to say I think it is a very discreet way to 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 go about this. But it's um it it wouldn't be so much of a a crosswalk then, right? It would be uh, I guess it could be. Uh, but um, if that one stands out to you, right? I would find that one really super useful. Um, because right now DC is funding three. We're doing DC Reading Clinic, Aussie, and TNTP, right at the same time. And no other, no other uh, system I know of is hasn't just focused in on one um, as a priority that I know of, right? So uh, that I think it would actually be helpful to know how they selected um, Representative Wattenberg. Oh, you could finish. Did you finish? So two two things, um, just as thoughts. Um, one is to understand better what does go on in the DC Reading Clinic. Wait, am I on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, because I think what we know from the people who have been in there, at least my my personal understanding, I think Alistair has the same, is that people feel very good about it. They learn a lot. They learn it in a way that's very helpful. So what are they doing? What about that is what we not need to keep? You know, that's one way I would go about this and one kind of research or group of people to talk to. Um, and the second that is related, and again, I'm not trying to say, I, I don't feel equipped to sort of push questions in or out of the survey, but it's more to give ideas or context of the people who are going to sort of more decide this. But the other thing that I feel a big question mark on and, and something that will be very important to this working and also a way that DC can be sort of add something to the whole conversation on this is that there's a lot of support in DC for doing this at the level of the board. I think it's a little unclear, but I think at the level of, you know, OSI and DCPS, and that's, it's a controversial issue. So that alone is a little bit rare and we wanna take advantage of it. And I think one thing we can do is understand. So a lot of times when PD is done, I mean, bound structured literacy, it, it's very specific, right? It's very detailed about what you do and the order in which you do it. How do you explain that and inspire teach teachers how to do that in a way that doesn't feel completely intimidating, insulting, and constraining. Like what's the, how, what's the, what's the way that you get people on board for that and teach them what they need to do. And at the end of the day, people really want to do it. That's to me, um, the big question that we want to investigate is there, there's an approach on literacy that, you know, we understand to be much more effective than other ones. How do you at the end of the day, get teachers to buy into it. And I think the DC literacy, the DC reading clinic is a way into that as well. So I wanna be conscious of time. We've got uh, just six minutes left. I, I, I think all of these questions are, are great. And I would like to just provide agency back to the two students to say, you've heard us kind of share where we're going, all of the various questions we're, we're asking. If there's one of these that you can help us take on, it would be really helpful. And so um, my, my proposal is uh, we come back to this with uh, you two writing to us and saying, hey, we've decided to go down this path. We can give you some written feedback and are just really, really grateful for this chance to get to work with you. Does that sound okay to, to the two of you and to President Sutter? Okay. So then I'm going to take the last two minutes uh, uh, before we wrap up to just update on um, and, and ask for you all to hold me accountable, actually, 
um, uh, to put together, I mean, one thing that um, Aussie has also told us that they would find helpful is engagement with our constituents around literacy. And so I've been talking with reading instructors and school librarians about um, putting together some resources uh, in, a, in a really accessible format. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Honor. And um, thank you, Ms. Uh, Juneo. Um, putting together a two-pager that overviews some of the resources, right? And uh, kind of summarizes, maybe is, 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 is not the right verb, but takes some of the key themes that are relevant to families from the comprehensive literacy plan, this, this 126 page behemoth, right? And, and, and kind of provide some kind of more, more accessible guide for families and our constituents around literacy for, for I think mainly for elementary and, and pre, pre-K families. Uh, so I've been wanting to just put that together and get your feedback. So if, if I put that together before the July 4th holiday, would you all be willing to take a look at it and give me some feedback? Okay. And um, uh, it's on a recorded call. So if I don't do it, hold me accountable. Um, <laughs> um, and um, uh, I, I, th I would find that, I, I was talking to some families too that, that would find just some way to navigate this really helpful. So um, thank you, Representative Wattenberg. Okay, and then, and then what we would do with it, if we all like it, right, is translate, kind of design that, translate that into, into the languages, right? And I think this, is, this would be a really cool project for the committee. Um, and President Sutter, I don't know if this needs to run through the rest of the board, but you know, take that to the rest of the board, get approval, translate it, and start distributing out to the families um, who have been asking these questions, right? And so that's the, that's the, that's the goal that I've got with it. Um, so if you are supportive of that, pending how that draft looks, of course, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I think if you send it to all of us and, and we make that the goal for it, that we share it with the rest of the board and then go through the channels to get it translated so that we can, I mean, one thing I think is super exciting about this is it's an opportunity for the board to play partner to Aussie's work in a way that is not quite a back and forth decision-making, but is about dear public, where are your voice? There's this document we don't think is super accessible in its current form. We're gonna make that accessible for you. Um, and, and I think that's something we can provide as a value add. So I'm, I'm super Great. excited about it and excited to see the draft. Super, okay, thank you. Um, Alex and Caitlin, did I miss anything? Um, I think the only other thing on literacy representative Chang was um, we had talked, there is going to be a hearing um, with the committee of the whole on the state of literacy in the district. Um, I believe it's going to be held on July 14th at 10 a.m. Um, and it will be a round table. Um, I, I, I do think the public signup is um, available and um, I do believe the state board has been invited to uh, be a government witness. So just as a, a date and um, note for everybody. Thank you, Alex. Great, well, um, great to spend the last hour with all of you. Um, Representative Bernstadt, I hope you have a, a good night. And um, to the rest of you, hope you have a good evening. And uh, looking forward to, to talking about our next meeting. Bye. Thanks all.